Hey, it's Jim with Cyber Recon, here to talk to you about race conditions. This is part of Subject 1.6 in Domain 1, and explain the impacts associated with types of vulnerabilities. This is race conditions. Let's look at what this is all about. So, when we look at race conditions, it's important to first define what a race condition is. So this is a definition from our friends at Wikipedia. A race condition, or race hazard, is the condition of an electronics, software, or other system where the system substantive behavior is dependent on the sequence or timing of other uncontrollable events. It becomes a bug when one or more of the possible behaviors is undesirable. So really we're having something happen that should happen in sequence and the program has defined the sequence, but somehow when they built the program, when they built the software, that sequence isn't always followed and the input is not always handled in the order that the programmer wanted it handled in. So it's a bug because it has to be fixed. It's really hard to find these. So they're normally found in the wild when people start using the software. And that's really why we have to have strong testing, user acceptance testing, component testing and security testing before a project goes live in, into an actual program that we release to the wild. So this vulnerability occurs when a program is designed to do a specific thing in sequence, but things do not happen in the order required, right? So more than one inputs race to out, more than one input race to influence the output first. So we want things to happen one, two, three, four, five, and somehow they happen one, four, three, two, one, or whatever. They don't happen the way the programmer wanted them to happen. And that's an, that's an issue because if we're handling things like transactions of cash or the way something is needs to happen for the project to go forward or for the application to work correctly, inputs getting to, to the output in the wrong order could cause maybe somebody to have more or less money than they should have, or it could cause the system to crash altogether. This happens a lot in multi-threaded programs or distributed programs, and it can be compounded by other vulnerabilities. So it's really the things we need to know about race conditions it is more than one input is racing to influence the output first. Things are not happening in the sequence that the programmer wanted them to happen. So. If we look at this in a very, very simple demonstration of what it could look like in the real world, not in a program, but say this was the real world. We want things to happen in a specific sequence. So Alice knows that her balance in the bank is $500. So she deposits $1,000. That should make her balance go up by, by $1,000 to $1,500. But about the same time, Bob cashes a check from Alice in the amount of $700, right? So now we've got two transactions or two input values going towards the bank. Now, if the bank does not sequence things correctly, right, even though that deposit may get there a bit earlier, if it's not sequenced correctly, the way it processes through the bank, Alice's balance may be actually negative 200 because Bob's check may get there first and she only has that $500 balance, $700 out, that leaves her a negative 200 even though she had a $1,000 deposit coming in. And now, more than likely, the deposit would be processed next and that would bring her balance back up, but there may be things like overdraft charges or the check may even get returned to Bob. So. This is a very simple example of a race condition. So there's two inputs coming in. In this case, the first input is the uh, deposit of 1,000. The second input is the withdraw a 700 from the check. That's going to impact the output or her balance. So we really wanna watch these things. Uh, we wanna look out for them in our programming. And if we're the security professional that, that, that's there to make sure that the programs are secure, we have to look for these things either through manual code review or automated code review. So as always, I'm Jim with Cyber Recon here, helping you get better at your security career, hopefully getting you moved up 
the security ladder and to bigger and better things. As always, we'd love you to subscribe, like, comment, hit the bell to be notified, and we will see you next time. Be careful out there.